There's a medical revolution happening all around us, and it's one that's going to help us conquer some of society's most dreaded conditions. Serving a week or two, like from wherever you are with your starting point, you can increase your longevity, your survival by 4.7 years. Have you ever wondered about the effects of coffee consumption on health? Do eggs only increase cholesterol? Or are they a healthy source of protein? Similarly, from seafood to meat, sourdough bread to soybeans, this food list influenced by the opinions of scientists and experts seems endless. Having so many and often different opinions on diet, getting your hands on what to eat is a difficult choice. So what body healing secrets do we have from Dr. William Lee? Which foods has he suggested to cancer fighting patients? And what is his approach to diet? Let's dive into the details. Dr. William Lee is the author of the New York Times bestseller, Eat to Beat Disease. His recent publication includes Eat to Beat Your Diet. The reason for Dr. Lee's prominence is aligned with the understanding of the general population. His writings go beyond the proverbial food fights and get into the details of the science behind them, explaining their action mechanisms on our bodies after consumption. As Dr. Lee says, our bodies are hardwired for health and capable of healing themselves, and the foods we eat can amplify this power. The answer to many queries lies in Dr. Lee's books if you are struggling with what to eat and how to prepare it. For instance, let me take you back to your childhood and imagine the person pulling your grocery cart is none other than Dr. William Lee. And our search for this has taken us to the market, the farm, and to the spice cabinet because what we've discovered is that Mother Nature has laced a large number of foods and beverages and herbs with naturally occurring inhibitors of angiogenesis. Looking back on his student life, Dr. Lee stated that he received no nutrition education or training in his medical training. Dr. William Lee is a scientist, a physician, and the president and medical director of the Angiogenesis Foundation in Boston, a nonprofit organization. With his extensive and robust research and experience in the field, he recalls the patients in their elderly stage, like in their 60s or even 70s, who were suffering from failing health caused by chronic diseases like cardiac issues, diabetes, and most importantly, cancer. All of these patients were once soldiers, athletes, or active and healthy members of society when their health was at its peak or when they were younger. He used to ponder, why were they ill now? What happened to all of their activism and athletic abilities? What caused their joints, tissues, and organs to fail? But cancers don't start out like this. And in fact, cancers don't start out with a blood supply. They start out as small, microscopic nests of cells that can only grow to one half a cubic millimeter in size. That's the tip of a ballpoint pen. As time passed by and Lee began practicing medicine, he was met with a very common yet most important question by his majority of patients. Virtually all of my patients asked me, Doc, what should I be eating? And the answer to that was his eat to beat movement, which is based on food and medicine together. So you see, this query led to the foundation of his journey and research on what to eat and how to prepare science that people around the world are following in their daily routines. I began to realize that diet and lifestyle were something that needed to be addressed by scientists and doctors, not just trainers and online gurus. With that initiative, the Eat to Beats movement took another step and resulted in a complete and best-selling book, Eat to Beat Disease, The New Science of How Your Body Can Heal Itself, which is based on angiogenesis science. Angiogenesis. There's a medical revolution happening all around us and it's one that's gonna help us conquer some of society's most dreaded conditions, including cancer. And the revolution is called angiogenesis, and it's based on the process that our bodies use to grow blood vessels. So this might be a term that most of you have heard of, but what it means when it comes to preventing cancer, boosting and supporting the defense system of your body if you are suffering from cancer, is the term that you must pay attention to. Angiogenesis is the process used by the body to grow blood vessels which is crucial to our health. Blood vessels from our circulation, a 60,000 mile network that brings oxygen and nutrients to feed every cell in our body. Too few blood vessels and our organs starve and can die. Too many and disease can result, said Dr. William Lee. So why should we care about blood vessels? Well, the human body is literally packed with them. 60,000 miles worth in a typical adult. 
Dr. Lee has been in the field of angiogenesis for more than 30 years, which has assisted him in various discoveries and knowledgeable insight into this field. And when angiogenesis is out of balance, a myriad of diseases result. When it comes to his approach to the disease, it is more focused on preventive measures instead of treating the disease solely. And the star of the remedy is the food in the form of preventive medicine, he says. Eating healthy food is something we can do for ourselves at home, under our control, according to our preferences, and between visits to the doctor's office, adds Lee. As he claims, the diet and the intake that we have in our daily routine have tremendous effects on the prevention of cancer and its treatment. In total, there are more than 70 major diseases affecting more than a billion people worldwide that all look on the surface to be different from one another, but all actually share abnormal angiogenesis as their common denominator. Diet and Cancer Prevention As experts say, the ability of your body to fight against cancer and prevent this disease lies in your decision of what you eat. According to the American Cancer Society, ACS, poor nutrition and lifestyle factors are the cause of cancer in 18% of cases and they result in death in 16% of the cases in the United States alone. The American Cancer Society recommends a cancer prevention diet that includes colorful vegetables such as dark green, red, and orange. This also includes a plant-based protein diet such as beans and peas, whole grains, and fruits. As per Dr. Lee's expertise, a lower risk of developing cancer is also related to what not to eat. The American Cancer Society also recommends not eating processed and ultra-processed foods, red meat, sugar, soft drinks, and alcohol. When asked about which foods he tries to avoid at any cost, Dr. Lee surprised the young generation by opting for junk and processed food to avoid. I never eat old school junk food, like ultra-processed chips and other snacks. A study published in the BMJ in February 2018 suggests that increasing one's intake of ultra-processed foods by 10% increases one's cancer risk, suggesting a direct relation between the two. What's more, ultra-processed foods are made with artificial flavoring, colors, and preservatives. These recommended and prohibited items align with the cancer prevention recommendation given by the World Cancer Research Fund, a subdivision of the American Institute for Cancer Research. The parent organization also suggests surviving with a plant-based diet that includes whole grains, legumes, non-starchy vegetables, and fruits. The plant-based diet is rich in fiber which protects against colorectal cancer. It also contains vitamins and minerals essential for keeping the body's defense system active and healthy. So soy phytoestrogens are like mother nature's tamoxifen, which doctors give to their patients every day. Now, the use of a plant-based diet, as suggested by Dr. Lee, also keeps one away from unhealthy ingredients such as food containing artificial sugar, flavors, and refined flour, which tend to be higher in calories and, as a result, promote an increase in body weight, leading to conditions like obesity and diabetes. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, 13 cancers are related to being overweight and obesity, including cancers of major organs, such as the esophagus, liver, gallbladder, and pancreas, diet, and cancer treatment. Dr. William Lee, in his popular TED talk, Can We Eat to Starve Cancer, has introduced people to the utilization of anti-angiogenic therapy as a form of cancer prevention therapy. The TED talk has more than 1.2 million views on YouTube. The notion of the speech highlights the importance of eating a diet that contains anti-angiogenic substances, which reduce angiogenesis as well as stop the formation of tumors in blood vessels and organs, and also stop their growth once they have already developed. Dr. Lee emphasizes that one should not solely utilize foods and diets instead of medication, as they both have to go hand in hand. What he does recommend is the use of food with potential anti-cancer properties. And what are these anti-cancer foods, you must be wondering? These include tea, turmeric, citrus, grapes, garlic, berries, and tomatoes. Uh, so that's all you need. That frequency of to cooked tomatoes has been shown to lower the risk of developing prostate cancer by 29%. Some dietary patterns have been proven effective in curing or stopping certain cancers from spreading in the body. How? These foods boost the body's defense system and healing capabilities. In a study published in Cancer Prevention Research in June 2015, covering over 90 men with prostate cancer, 
those patients who used a specific dietary pattern, which included a diet based on plants featuring vegetables, fruits, legumes, and whole grains, were 36% less likely to die from the disease, as compared to men who did not follow the specific diet and used processed foods and Western-style diet products. Five foods and cancer, what's the deal? In the list of five foods shared by Dr. Lee to fight against cancer, first, we have green tea. It contains catechins, specifically EGCG, which have been shown to reduce the risk of colon cancer, stomach cancer, and esophageal cancer. It is mostly beneficial for the digestive tract and prohibits the formation of cancer cells in the tract. As Dr. Lee says, you're sipping the green tea and it's flowing down and touching your entire GI tract. Green tea, which you know is almost universally recognized as a healthy beverage, um, actually helps to mow that lawn. So what does EGCG do in the body? Well, something quite extraordinary. Drinking tea has been shown by cancer researchers to lower inflammation, which is of course one of the drivers for cancer. Besides this, green tea also boosts the immune system of the body to fight against cancer development and its growth. Brassica veggies are the second food on the list recommended by Dr. Lee. This is the group of vegetables which includes broccoli, cauliflower, and bok choy. These are very common in Asian and Mediterranean cuisines. These brassica veggies contain the chemical sulforaphane, the most powerful ingredient to provide power to the body's immune system. The strong immune system knocks out microscopic cancers, similar to green tea. It also assists in reducing inflammation in the organs and vessels. And these sulforaphanes, what do they do? They boost the immune system, right? Good strong immune system, knocks out uh, microscopic cancers, uh, also lowers inflammation. The sulforaphane in brassica is anti-angiogenic. They starve the cancer to death by cutting off the blood supply. Research conducted on broccoli, for instance, provides favorable results for patients suffering from the disease. Papaya is the food on the list that most people don't think is a cancer-fighting food. It has been shown to lower the risk of lung cancer. The red-colored papaya contains the chemical carotenoids which are sometimes referred to as beta-carotene. This chemical is anti-inflammatory, and like the previous two in the list, fights against cancer development in the body by boosting the immune system. Purple potatoes are not very different in color from regular potatoes. They do have their different characteristics. If you haven't seen a purple potato, it is a beautiful uh, potato. Regular potatoes, kind of brown, dirty looking. Purple potato, you could tell even from the outside, uh, there's something interesting because it's purplish on the outside. Their purple color comes from the natural dye called anthocyanin. These are the bioactives and their benefit is the reduction in inflammation, assisting in cutting off the blood supply to the tumors. These are also anti-angiogenic and fight against the tumors developing in the body. The plus point of having purple potatoes in the diet is that they attack the stem of the cancer cells, which is their sole resource for spreading and regenerating in the body. Lastly, we have pomegranate, as suggested by Dr. Lee. The tropical fruit that you are all aware of is like a big apple with thick skin and seeds inside, covered with liquid around each. This liquid or juice is filled with bioactive cells called elagitanins, naturally occurring chemicals that give the fruit its natural power against cancer. Elagitanins are responsible for the color and the acidity of the pomegranate. As far as cancer is concerned, Elagitanins cut the supply of the cancerous cells in the body, prohibiting their growth and development. Dr. William Lee's work. To move further, we have always shown the results of one-off studies, finding that compounds in blueberries promote brain health, or an antioxidant in green tea may prevent breast cancer. These news and research studies usually catch attention very quickly and cause so many of us to change our eating habits. However, what they don't tell you is the far side of things. Adding a single component to your existing diet or removing one from it is not going to benefit any of us at all, as said by Dr. Lee. After all, our overall diet and the interplay of a variety of different foods and nutrients is a much better predictor of health and future disease risk than whether or not we're simply eating a whole lot of spinach, he says. This is not to discourage research studies like these but to emphasize the importance of a diet plan. And it's just that simple. For the common person, getting to know what all he needs to stay healthy is quite difficult. To solve this problem, Dr. William Lee has provided all the necessary details and information 
in his literature work, such as Eat to Beat Disease and Eat to Beat Your Diet. Which is why green tea has been shown in so many human studies to be associated with a lower risk of developing not just one cancer like breast cancer or colon cancer, but almost every cancer that's been studied so far. Dr. Lee has provided a scientific approach and evidence in his books that favor the use of certain foods and medicines. He has explained how the body has the natural tendency to resist chronic diseases like cancer and dementia through five health defense systems, namely angiogenesis, the microbiome, regeneration, DNA protection, and immunity. Moreover, the information on what to eat to kickstart these defense systems is also there in the books. This all must sound amazing, right? But take a pause and think. Does the man who has written all this in his books apply that same to his own life? The answer is yes. Dr. Lee is not just the promoter of the healthy plant-based diet. He has been using it since long ago. While emphasizing that no day is a typical day and that there are multiple ways to eat a healthy diet, he did share his regularly used meals. For breakfast, he tends to keep the meal very light, starting his day with a cup of whole leaf green tea or espresso, alongside some powerful fruit to fuel the body power, such as kiwi. Green tea and coffee are what I call grand slammer foods. And what I mean by that is they activate all five health defense systems in the body, he says. As per Dr. Lee, kiwis are grand slammers and they do a great job of protecting the DNA from damage. He goes on to say that a kiwi a day has been shown to reduce damage to DNA by about 60%. During the day, Dr. Lee prefers to do himself a heavy plant-based diet treat and it often includes a salad made from leafy green vegetables like arugula, spinach, radicchio, or mash. Leafy greens, particularly those in the brassica family, contain special compounds that are anti-angiogenic, protect DNA, and boost the immune system, he says. Besides salads, he also uses nuts and seeds in the lunch, which help activate the defense system in the body. Lastly, before going to bed, it's dinner, Dr. Lee's biggest meal of the day. For this special meal, he pays special attention to what is fresh and in season. I tend to build my meal around a core vegetable first, and then think about how to make that vegetable as tasty as possible. Roasted radicchio is one of his favorite veggies for the night. He usually slices it in half, seasons it with olive oil, and cooks it for about 15 minutes. This serves as a motivation for us to change our lifestyle and move towards a healthy diet. As they say about it, you are what you eat. If you have come this far, be sure to check out other videos on the channel.